Welcome everyone to GamerMeld. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon if you like staying up to date on all things gaming hardware. Now on to the news. Nvidia's RTX line of Turing graphics cards have certainly stirred up controversy over simply whether they're anything to get excited about or not. But regardless, Nvidia wants as many potential customers as they can get. This includes the mobile market. No, not that mobile market. That one. Originally found and reported by WCCF Tech, there's a few things that make it pretty clear Nvidia isn't too far away from bringing mobile variants of their latest cards to laptops everywhere. First comes a list of device IDs shared on GitHub. In it is the ID TU104M. Of course, it's the M part that's interesting, as it almost certainly stands for mobile, which given the device TU104 would make it a 2080 mobile GPU. Not only that, but they also found the GPU listed as a 2080 mobile chip on Device Hunt, the Device Database Consortium. And lastly, though taken with a tiny grain of salt, WCCF Tech claimed to have a source that tells them that, quote, we will put the 2080 Max-Q into the current thin 15 and the 17, referring to notebooks. What's interesting is what NVIDIA may plan to do with this mobile variant, since Pascal first had full mobile GPUs before their Max-Q. They may actually just be taking out the 27 watt virtual link port for VR that's a part of Turing since it's just added TDP for a pretty rare situation. That way it can have the same power draw as Pascal, but simply not support VR's future port. Who knows really, but one thing's nearly guaranteed, we won't have to wait long to find out. Next up for today, Intel is almost certainly going to be selling discrete gaming GPUs. It started on Reddit, where a Reddit moderator asked once AMD marketing head turned Intel discrete GPU marketing uh, person, Chris Hook, if they still planned on adding support for Adaptive Sync. To which Chris Hook replied, yes, he's a huge fan of Adaptive Sync. And here's the good part. Taking it a step further, PC gamers specifically asked about their discrete GPU supporting Adaptive Sync, and they got an actual answer. Yeah, not a non-answer answer, but a real one. He simply said, quote, answer is yes. Now, this actually tells us a couple really important things. For one, while it was nearly guaranteed already, this puts the final screw in the PC case. Intel is definitely making GPUs for gaming, since Adaptive Sync is only really something that benefits gamers. Not only that, but as long as Intel doesn't put some unnecessary proprietary hardware on top of the technology, like, say, Nvidia's G-Sync, we could see a paradigm shift in the industry. Currently, the monitor sync technology that you use is based on what graphics cards you have. If Intel GPUs support the open source Visa Adaptive Sync, it would mean free sync monitors should work for their GPUs, or at least the monitors won't be more expensive, ultimately adding pressure on Nvidia that could force them to support the cheaper technology as well. Basically, thank you competition. Lastly for today, we have a deal. AMD's RX 580 was upwards of $1,000 at one point, and it's finally gotten to very reasonable prices. Case in point, the Gigabyte Aorus 8 Gigabyte RX 580 is just $210 after a $20 mail-in rebate. To be honest, it's a pretty great deal either way, but $210 is even better. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for mobile GPUs based on Nvidia's Turing architecture, or just happy Pascal is further dropping in price? Let me know down in the comments below, and as always, have a great day.